bishops and teachers, they just teach, but he actually guides. So not only a minister, not only a prophet, but a liberator. A lot of children are not growing up. A lot of young men. You do so much mentoring. I reach out to so many young men. Jesus could not do an effective work until he heard a voice from heaven say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Something about a man that he needs to hear an affirmation from a father. If he doesn't have that affirmation, he walks through life almost void. We've got to do something to get men in a place where we can begin to help raise our sons and raise our young men. So there's a real need in our community to really try to help our own because a mentor is in your life to help shorten the distance. You have the privilege of being mentored by Bishop Jordan some 13 years ago. The very first day we sat around a huge round table. It had 20 of his employees sitting at that table. And instead of starting work, he had us open up a book called The Laws of Success. And for six hours, he taught out of that book instead of actually performing work functions. And he taught us principles that those things have actually bestilled within me to this day. As I learned to um, be around and grow with the bishop, I learned there was much I need to know about life. He is the kind of person that shows you every aspect of his life. If he's gonna mentor you, he doesn't play around. He puts in you exactly what he would do. And the bishop's path is a direction that have actually brought me four times the success I probably would have had on my own. The first time that I went out on the road with Bishop Jordan, we went to a hotel to stay while, while we were waiting for the service that night. And the first thing Bishop Jordan said to me was, Bobby, go in that room and look in the closets and see if any girls is in that class. That took me back that this man would actually go to the limbs of making sure that not only is his reputation protected, but his spirituality is protected. So that's what you know gave me the unction to say, I definitely need to stay uh, with this man because he is truly a man of God and he's truly one that can mentor me and teach me how to be a man, how to be a father. There were so many that were before me, like Reverend Ike, my mentor, who allowed me to stand on his shoulders. And he would always call me son. Even today, he would sit there and say, oh, I said, I'm getting ready to be, I'm new 50. He said, oh, you're such a baby. <laughs> and so I'm looking for helping to shorten the distance for those that want the distance shortened. And we've got to get our men back into place, and we've got to do that. It's got to come through a gospel of self-empowerment. Of course, a lot of people don't really know how he put his life on the line, not only as a prophet, you know, but um, as a minister of color, mm -hmm. on to open up a way for our community. Your destiny is locked up in the prophet's belly. And, you know, of course, my thing was seeing his face in, you know, in a newspaper, and I was instantly connected but I didn't quite know when I was going to finally meet him. I had been like a commercial photographer, um, and of course a quite successful one. But at that time, I, I was basically, I had been in three years of homelessness, forgotten everything that I had accomplished in life. I, I had accepted the fact that I was a bum, you know, that I was a nobody, that I was really worthless. I mean, everything in me was gone. But when I came to church, you know, he gave me a prophecy. I, he asked me what I did. I said, I'm a photographer. He said, well, I'm becoming bishop at the end of the week. He said, would you like to photograph my you know, elevation? I said, fantastic. Instantaneously, the gift that I thought that, that I forgot I had, I forgot who I was, was restored. And of course, the photographs I took of his elevation was probably some of the greatest photographs I've ever taken in my life. I said, Lord, how can I interpret this? It was a dream. This whole thing has been a dream. I saw him on television, and he was preaching at that time about the power of the dying. And um, I looked over at uh, my uh, fiance and I said to her, I have to meet this man. And when we looked at each other, our eyes locked and it never ended. He has been my mentor for almost 19 years. And what I have learned is how to be peaceful 
with my circumstances. Bishop Jordan, when you pull everything away, is a man who has worked at everything that he has in his life. He's worked at his family, he's worked at his relationships, he's worked at his ministry, and it's all because of his consciousness, his spirituality, which he's worked over these years to uh, develop and to give to those that know him. As a, as a Caucasian gentleman, have you ever felt somewhat alienated from the culture, from a religious standpoint? Years ago, while um, Pastor was uh, speaking about liberation, I basically understood all he was trying to do was because he does have a heart, he wants to help his people. But it doesn't mean he doesn't want to help me. I couldn't have been here for 19 years. We used to walk together 20-something years ago when I met Bishop George. When he came down to New Orleans, we were in the Lower Ninth Ward in a little small ministry. Bishop came down and began to speak life into us. My, 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 the great meetings that we had. Let me share this with you. In those days, I didn't know that God could speak to, to a man and through a man in such a direct way. He has raised up millions and millions of dollars into the lives of so many ministries, an unusual talent. He would, he would educate the local church, he would educate the local individuals, he would raise a lot of funds in there, he would just tell them, listen, just give me my expenses and you take the bulk of the proceeds for the local church. So a lot of individuals don't know that. So he not only talked empowerment, he walked empowerment. The own got to begin seeing the support of our own. Who knows who may be sitting here that becomes a future doctor or a future lawyer or the future president of this nation. Every word that Bishop